So in the last video, we, we took a look at building registers, and we actually built a register, well, a one-bit register anyway, using a disc well, somewhat discrete uh, logic here. We did use a, a, a D flip-flop. Um, but then I also talked about the 74LS173, which is, which is basically a four-bit register on a chip, uh, and how we were going to use that. One thing that I don't like about using just the 74LS173 is that it does have its own output control, which means that once it stores uh, some series of bits here in these in these uh, in these latches or these flip flops, um, you can't see what is in it. And I think it's pretty important um, for for this computer because I, I you know this computer is designed as something that you can you know use to learn about how computers operate. And I think it's pretty important to be able to see what's in every register. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 74LS173 uh, register chip, but I'm going to tie the output control such that the output is always on. Uh, but of course you don't want the output to always be on, otherwise the output will always be you know, outputting something to the bus. And uh, you don't want that because you know, then that register is putting its data on the bus all the time, and that's, that defeats the purpose. You want to have that enable ability. Um, and so what I'm, going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the, the output always on, um, so that we can hook LEDs up to this output, but then on the other side of those LEDs, I'm going to use uh, something like the 74LS245, which has these, these tri-state buffers in it. That way we can use the 74LS245 to control what's going out on the bus. So have the 74LS173 register always on, so we can see the LEDs to, to tell us what's in the register, um, and, but then use this to control whether it's actually being output to the bus or not. So essentially, uh, that kind of looks like this. This is sort of what that circuit would look like. Um, hopefully this makes some sense. Uh, but I've got the 74LS173, and, and each one has, has uh, you know, four bits, a four-bit register, so I'm using two of them to cover our eight bits. So we have our eight bits coming in. Uh, and then I have the, uh, the output, so M and N. Uh, I'm not sure why they call them that, but uh, those, are, those are the output controls, and for some reason there's two of them. Um, but in any event, if you tie both of them to ground, then the output will always be on. And so these, out, this, these will always be outputting, um, which is what we want. And then I have the, the eight LEDs hooked up so we can see what's stored in these registers. So the output's always on, and, and you can always see on these LEDs what's, what's actually stored in those registers. Um, you can ignore this line. I needed to draw this bigger than I thought. Um, and then we're using the 74LS245 uh, to, to actually control whether it goes back out on the bus or not. And so there's an enable line that, uh, that the 74LS245 has, and we, it's an inverted uh, logic line, so it would normally be high, and then you bring it low uh, to enable it. Um, and then when you bring that low, then, then we'll see, you know, whatever this is will actually get output. But if the enable is high, meaning it's, it's not enabled, um, then, then this, is, this is essentially shut off and it's not outputting a zero or a one to the bus. So this is fairly, fairly simple. We've got eight connections to the bus as inputs. We've got eight connections to the bus over here as outputs. We've got our load signal coming in, which is connected to the two load pins on, on each of the 74LS173s. And, and again, this is inverse logic, so when you bring it low, that tells these to load the value from the bus. Um, we've got the clock, which I don't think I drew, but the, cl the clock would be pin seven on, on both of these 74LS173s. So you need, to, you need to tie pin seven together and then connect that to your clock. Um, I did draw pin 15 here, which is the clear line, um, which, we're not going to use yet, but eventually, you know, when we get the rest of the computer built, we'll want to tie all these clear lines together so you have a you can have a button somewhere to just clear everything in the computer, uh, which can be helpful. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's the direction uh, here, which we're just tying to five volts, so that the direction is always in this direction from you know from from this side to this side. So I've started to build this here. So this is these are the two 74LS173s. These are our, our register chips. And then, of course, our, our 245, 74LS245 over here, uh, which is our, which is our, we're essentially using as the output buffer. Um, and I've got uh, some LEDs hooked up here, um, just kind of stuck in here on the outputs. So you can see pin three, four, five, and six um, is connected here. Pin three, four, five, and six. I've got the LEDs there. Same thing over here. Um, pins one and two, uh, as you can see here, tied to ground, and that. Um, that just enables our output all the time, so we'll always see the output on those LEDs. Pin 7, which I didn't draw here, is the clock, and you can see I just tied those together 
uh, pin seven on both of these with this white wire, and then we'll have to connect that off to our clock, um, which is which is going to be elsewhere in the computer. The clear signal is pin 15, so I've just tied the two the pin 15s of each chip together, uh, and then our our load here is uh, pins nine and ten um, on both chips, and so you can see nine and ten, nine and ten tied together. Uh, so those are just all tied together, and then you know we'll just need to connect our load uh, signal to to here somewhere. So now all that's left to, to hook up here is, is connecting the, the outputs of the 74LS173s, uh, which of course are already connected to these LEDs, which are just connected across to, to ground. You can, I don't know if you can see that here, uh, but they're just connected across, uh, across here to ground. And uh, we just need to connect, uh, connect those as well uh, to, to our uh, 74LS245, so just connecting these across. And conveniently, all of these pins um, are, are on the same side here. So one, two, three, and four are, are kind of on the bottom side of this chip here, and you know, uh, the inputs for the 74LS245 are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and those are all down here on the bottom of this chip. Um, and actually, one of the reasons I'm using the 245 specifically is, is because of that. It just makes the wiring easier, um, because you can set the direction as one direction or the other. So you might wonder, you know, if you're wondering why we're using this bi-directional chip, but then only using it in one direction, it's, it's actually just because it makes the wiring easier. Uh, and it doesn't cost any more than any of the other chips. So I'm just going to go ahead and hook this up. Um, you just have to be careful to, to squeeze all this in here. It can be a bit of a, of a tight squeeze. And of course, you are under no obligation to make your board look as pretty as mine. I'm just trying to make this uh, easy for you guys to see what's going on. But certainly no one is going to hold it against you if you've got a big old tangled mess of wires. And now I'm starting to cover up this, uh, this black wire under here, uh, which is why I wanted to show you everything else before I stuck the rest of this in here, because it does kind of mask what's going on underneath. But there we go. We've got this hooked up now. Uh, so that all of our all of our outputs, um, all of our outputs here from the 74LS173 uh, register chips are hooked to the the eight inputs um, across our uh, 74LS245, which is over here. So the other thing we can do, uh, or that we should do, is is tie the the bus and uh, bus sort of terminals here together, right? So you know each of these 74LS173s has four connections to the bus, and so across both of them there's eight connections to the bus. Uh, and then the 74LS245 uh, buffer here also has eight connections to the bus. And we can, we can actually just tie those together directly here, and then coming off of this board we'll just have one set of connections. And it might feel kind of weird to tie your outputs back to your inputs, but remember, you know, we've got our load and our enable uh, signals, and we're only going to be doing one or the other, right? So. So really, this is only sometimes an output, and this is only sometimes an input. Uh, and if, if we're doing things right, they're never an input and an output at the same time. So connecting them to each other, uh, it might seem strange to connect the input to the output, but, um, but it's actually okay. Okay, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. And so the connection to our bus is these these eight uh, these eight blue wires, or sort of this this side up here. So we can if we want to just add these connections here that we can connect to a bus. Let's do that. And so these eight wires here are our connection to our bus. So we've got our load signal over here. Uh, we've got the enable over here. Which is uh, you know the enable for the output to the to the bus, and of course we've got the the reset here as well, which is this uh, pin uh, uh, 15, uh, which we'll just we'll just tie that to ground. We're not going to use that. We'll just leave that so that it's not resetting everything. And then the last thing we have is the clock, which is right here. This this white wire uh, connecting here, and so that's it. That's uh, that's pretty much our our register.